evening. Yes, good evening. It is evening. And welcome back to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast, our AEW Dynamite review. And of course, I'm your host, Adam Cousins. And it wouldn't be the Dynamite review, would it, without my good friend, my... Oh, I keep saying this wrong. My one third of Team Buckle, my AEW guru, the Dynamite Man, Dave D. And... D, how are you feeling now, my man? <clears throat> I'm I'm okay, yeah. I, yeah, I'm a lot better than I was. A lot Still alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, man flu has been known to take to take men out, but um yeah, I'm I'm on I've survived. I'm on the I'm on the mend. You can mark yourself safe from it on Facebook. That's man. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an absolute career ending injury, man. Can't be, man. I can can't I can vouch for that. Um, Dave, before we get on to Dynamite, we do have some uh, news. So, as always, we seem to have a couple of bits of news um, from AEW. Um, we talk about the sort of negative-ish news first before the positive. Um, you saw the picture um, that was banging around on social media on Thursday, yesterday. Uh, maybe, yeah, it was yesterday, um, which showed um, some em- a lot of empty seats for uh, Ring of Honor, the show. Um, hard camera side, so we can take a little bit away from that because it is hard camera um and underneath that there was a guy that went to the event and he broke down what they were doing so he went in he got his seat ring of honor hour one was taped dynamite was taped rampage was taped and ring of honor hours two was taped yeah um it does is this doing ring of honor a bit of a disjustice i get there's a production cost involved with this but wouldn't it just be better for them to record dynamite rampage and just record Ring of Honor in Florida like they have been. I think so. Um, I, I mean, looking at how long that show was, you, you kind of, even the biggest wrestling fan in the world, you know, when you're four hours deep, mm. um, yeah, you're asking a lot of people to to want to stay for every single match uh, with the travel back as well. And, you know, so I'm hoping that all of these issues get righted when Collision come. And I know we keep saying it mm. and we, we're putting it on a bit of a pedestal. Yeah. But the issues with with the recording uh, and when they film certain shows, um, the roster, who's on each show, I'm hoping we're a few weeks away from having all of these issues resolved. They've done things uh, in hindsight. They could have done things a lot better, I think, and I think they would admit that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've just got to get through to to a couple of Saturdays time and, and hopefully everything settles down again and, and yeah, it's easy, a lot easier for the fans as well. Yeah, I mean, even I mean, even as you say, the diehard fans like us would, would struggle to get through that kind of uh you know schedule. And we and we love wrestling, but it's just it's just tough. it's just too much. You wouldn't want you wouldn't want to sit through like an eight eight hours of a film would you or no. you know yeah and, and i know eight hours is an exaggeration but when you're factoring in travel as well yeah it's the equivalent of a day at work it um, is so yeah, yeah I, I think as i say i think that has got to be addressed and i, I don't know what the, the crack is with ring of honor really it seems like warner brothers haven't really got an appetite for it because mm. none of the None of the extra funding or anything seems to pertain to Ring of Honor. It all seems to be to AEW, it's Dynamite, and it's, yep. it's uh, Collision. So <clears> we'll have to see how that goes, because a lot of the matches on Ring of Honor have been great, and a lot of the shows have, have got real good feedback. Um, yep. But if you're lumping it in with four hours of Dynamite and Rampage and God knows else, then... Because uh, you're going to have a dark, even without dark and elevation, you're going to have dark matches prior to Dynamite going live. Yep. So, yeah, hopefully they get all this resolved pretty quickly. I hope so. But anyway, on to more positive news. Uh, the signing of Aussie Open to uh, AEW. They are all elite now. Carl Fletcher had his match. We're going to get into that very, very shortly. Obviously, I think it's is it Mark Davis, the other one. I can't remember his name. Yeah, no. he's out with a, a shoulder injury. I he, think he's is. out of a shoulder injury at the moment. But they are all elite now. From my point of view, outside of the WWE AEW, one of the top, top tag teams that are available to get AEW got. Yeah. The I want you to say it's a negative. Is you know, we always say they've got a massive roster and they've kept adding to it at this. Is it a case with these guys that these were just too good of a free agent to pass up? Because also thinking about they could complete the set at some point and get Osprey in permanently. Well, yeah, they've worked with AEW before, haven't yes. they? Like with Osprey and on their own, they were in like the the tag team 
yeah. Battle Royal recently, mm -hmm. um, which I actually thought they had a chance of winning. Um, so, uh, yeah, like you say, too, too good an opportunity to let pass by. Yeah. Um, great additions to the roster. And again, like hopefully when everything settles, we can have a really strong tag division. We can yeah. have a really strong trios division. Um, and looking at the, the match that uh, he had with Orange Cassidy, um, mm. you, you could certainly while Mark Davis is injured and rehabbing his shoulder injury, uh, get him on TV and get him, give him a singles run because that was that was some match. But we'll get on to that. We will get on to that. And indeed, I've heard that they've trademarked the term transfer portal at AEW. Now, is this going to be how they swap the talent from Collision and Dynamite, do you think? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like over <laughs> overcomplicating it to a degree. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It might be great. And, and I'm just <clears throat> being pessimistic. <laughs> and I'm usually pretty positive, but there's just been so much, uh, I don't know, banding around in the recent last few months. Mm. I think a lot of AEW fans now just want to get to this split and find out who's on which show and yeah. then get our teeth into the wrestling and looking forward to the programme and the storylines and not so much the logistics uh, and everything associated with it. But yeah, transfer, transfer portal is a new one it's for like me. like football, doesn't it? Sounds like we're going to have, they be like, it'd be like a Sky Sports News. You'll have them reading out as it gets to, they'll have like a transfer clock watch or something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what AEW does best in, or it, it works better for me is when they're not competing with WWE and they're doing their own stuff and they're mm -hmm. saying, you know, this is what we like. This is our style. So if they're trying to kind of, point score uh, and do a draft and say, well, this was WWE's draft. We're going to do it better. This is what we're going to do. I think it's unnecessary. I think it's unnecessary. Yeah. So I, I hope it, I mean, Tony Khan, he knows he's, he's American football and maybe there are things that he can bring in to make it interesting, but I don't think you need to do anything too major. No, you, know, you just need two rosters. Don't you really? Yeah. And let the champions compete on both. Indeed. Well, he's also got he's also got his contacts at Fulham, hasn't he? So uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we'll leave that as main. Let's crack on with dynamite. And as we've said, and generally, starting dynamite always near enough. Cassidy, Orange Cassidy, or Pockets, as I like to call him, um, against uh, Carl Fletcher from Aussie Open. And you know, we we kind of knew that Cassidy was going to retain just because it was already announced last week about the bottle roll. So he kind of already knew that he wasn't going to lose that match. Mm. But my God, what a great opening to Dynamite that was. Those two put on a, a fantastic match. And it is weird because sometimes you get tag teams that when you get one in the ring, when you don't have the other one, they struggle. It just seemed easy for Fletcher in this match. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I shouldn't be surprised, really, because we, no. we keep seeing Orange Cassidy have these matches. And the only... Uh, I, I, I thought Orange would go over. Yeah. I did think maybe, you know, they could go into it and, and maybe Orange has got to go into the Battle Royal at the pay-per-view and he's got to try and get it back or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in all likeliness, you know, it played out how we expected it to. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I mean... We've spoken about it before, you know, how far Orange Cassidy's come with his character, yeah. his wrestling ability. He's obviously been a great wrestler for a long time, but show he just seems to get better and better. And you'd say he's one of the top stars now on the show. Definitely. Definitely, Definitely. One of the most popular. I think, yeah, I certainly think in some in, in some aspects of the uh, wrestling community, he's a little bit like Marmite. And he was certainly with me. I, I certainly was a bit yeah. like, oh, OK, what's this guy doing? Um, but as he's become champion, and well, even as he's become champion, even before he become champion, you can see that the guy is the comedic value, but there's also the wrestling side, which he can do, which yeah. which is great. And, and the match for me delivered, I thought it was an outstanding start to Dynamite. Um, <clears throat> yeah. After that, we had a little bit of... Uh, I believe they went backstage with uh, Ricky Starks, uh, and he said he was basically sick and tired of getting jumped, and he's getting in the back. He thinks he's put them to uh, Jay White and Juice into the rearview mirror. He's going to go into the Battle Royal, and they basically said it's not going to be the case. Uh, and then FTR come in, uh, have a little bit of a to do with the Jarrets. Briscoe comes out. Basically, Briscoe's not going to be involved in any of these two. He just doesn't want to do, doesn't give a hoot, I think is the word that he said or something, with these yeah. goons, I think he think was the word that he used. Um, 
Touching on rookie stocks, that looks as though he's set for the um, blackjack, sorry, blackjack battle roll uh, yeah. on Sunday. I'm assuming Juice and or Jay White will be involved in that as well. Do you see the title changing? Uh, I know we're going to have a prediction show on Sunday. I don't want to go too much into it, but do you think yeah. Sunday is the time where Orange's luck, so to speak, runs out? Well, this is the only prediction that I'm struggling with, to be honest. I've decided everything else. <laughs> um, I mean, they've, they've built this story great, and Orange is selling of his injuries, and every week there's, there's something else that, you know, yeah. he's got tape on. Yeah. Um, so I think they should probably... I mean, it's a, it's a good opportunity, really, for him to drop it because he's against 20 men. So <laughs> that it kind of... You know, it would make sense for him to drop the title, but as he got one last, maybe one last match where he goes all out and he puts absolutely everything on the line and he gets through it, and then yeah. maybe the dynamite after he drops it, after everything he's gone through, I, I don't know. Um, Jay White is in the the battle yeah. roar and he's as you say, Ricky Juice. Stark and Juice, yeah. so they're all in it. Um, we were pretty sure that we'd perhaps be seeing Jay White against Ricky Starks on the pay per view, but yeah. In fairness, if you look at the card, it's pretty strong. It and I don't think you really want to add more matches to it because they've done that in the past and they've had too many matches on a pay per view. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a bit. Uh, Kurt, uh, Swerve and Keith Lee as well. That's another one that we maybe thought a few weeks ago that we could yeah. have been building towards that and not the case. So, I, I could see them perhaps taking each other out in the Battle Royal and, and there's different stories happening within the Battle Royal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't decided yet in terms of my prediction. I don't even know who's in the whole thing, to be I'll have to have a little look. They have it. announced it because when I was counting up, going off the graphic, there was 21. So it doesn't look like there's going to be a surprise entry. No, no, like Joker. I know it's not doesn't... the Cena one, is it? It's a black. No. Yeah. Uh, it looks like the 21 that are in uh, are going to, unless they do some angle on, on the day of the show or mm -hmm. in the lead up to the match. It, they've announced all the participants essentially. Right. So we haven't got all. So that is just a general selection then for me to have a look at. I'll have a look yeah, at it. Yeah. There was anything like my horse racing bets of the week uh, the other day with, with the uh, groom of the wedding. It was actually quite good. So I might be all right. But yeah, um, yeah. I, I digress. Um, there was a little bit in the back with Sammy Guevara. Um, he said he won't back down for anyone. Renee tells him that uh, MJF offer still stands. We'll, we'll get into a bit more about that later on. Um, <clears throat> the next match on the card was the uh, trios, the open house match. Uh, house of Black uh, versus Metalik, Fox and Christian. Um, solid. Again, I, I didn't expect changes uh anyway yeah. I, don't, I don't expect them to drop anytime soon to be quite honest with you at the moment there's nobody there that i really see that's going to take those titles and, and i don't think they should at the minute <clears throat> uh, take those titles off the house of black but solid match again uh house of black i mean they've done the no rope breaks in this one um they all they put them all in uh submission holes to tap them out but yeah, just a general let's get House of Black strong match, really. <clears throat> yeah, I think no rope breaks is something that is just part of the the rules. Oh, is it part of the rules? Yeah, now? yeah. So yeah. the the uh, dealer's choice option. Yeah, uh, was that it was a lucha libre match. Ah, so okay. Was that what it was? A, yeah. So essentially, they didn't have to tag out as right. soon as somebody's out the ring, somebody else can come in. They don't. There's no tagging in and out. It's just continuous. You know. Yeah, which I, th I thought was was fairly good, as you say. Didn't really have well. There, there was no chance that it was ever gonna no. be, be an upset. Uh, I like the finish though. I like yeah. because of the no rope breaks, you could get all three guys in the submission, and yeah, I think there's a lot there's a lot more to come from the House of Black. Um, and I'm I'm hoping they have a really strong summer and and hold on to the titles for a long time. Do you think they add to the titles with Julia at some point? Um, yeah. You like the music now, right? I do, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm a big fan of wrestling themes, yes, in general. But Julia Hart's theme is great. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I think they'll. I could see Julia Hart moving herself into the picture for one of the women's titles at, at some point. Perhaps not at the minute, and, no. and this, you know it's quite congested as it is there. And I don't. You couldn't see it kind of going up against Jay Cargill, that'd be a bit of a mismatch, or Jamie Hayter, but I certainly think in the future she'd be a contender for one of the women's titles. 
Yeah, me too. I think so. I think she, she's she's improving, isn't she? I think that's that's the key word. She's very young, and um, yeah. I think she's you know, twenty one or twenty twenty one or twenty two. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. So a bit know. same as age as kind of like Millie sort of went. To, yeah, yeah. So yeah, very much, um, very much a one for, one to look out for for sure. Definitely. Um, yeah, Blackpool Combat Club was uh <clears throat> in the in the building or at the back, and uh, Danielson. Oh no, sorry, Moxley was the one that said these words, which we will talk about a bit more later on, but he said that they are the best in the world and their hands doesn't shake when they say that because it's the truth. Now, a bit later on in the show, uh, Claudio and you will go on for the tag team titles ring of honor. So we'll touch on that and we'll touch on that. The uh, the best in the world bit a bit later on because there's obviously things going on on this show that will kind of get that away. Um, MJF comes comes down throws the drink at Shivani. I love it when they when he does Shivani. I will never forget there was a, a I don't know if it was a dynamite or if it was a dark during COVID and he done a move and he got on the rope and he went, what did you think about that Shivani, you fat prick? And it was yeah. just, <laughs> just it killed me. It killed me. Um basically he's just hyping up the 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 uh, four pillars match at um double or nothing. And then uh he was basically saying that the fans have not shown him the respect he deserves. He's contracted, and then he started the whole twenty twenty four thing again. Which is quite interesting when he's bringing that up with the announcement that's coming from Tony Khan later on, and it maybe we'll maybe we'll touch on that again a bit later. Anyway, um, it all ends up. It all kicks off with them all really. Um, it ends up with MJF uh, doing a low blow on Darby Allen. Um, Guevara comes out to make the save, uh, and then Jungle Boy's music hits, lays uh, MJF out with a clothesline and holds up a title. Now, again, we've been critical of the booking of this match, and rightfully so. In, in terms of the booking, but in terms of the, the, the way that this has gone to... Promos. The, yeah. the promos and the fact that it really has had not a lot of build that it should have had as your champion. In my opinion, MJF's champion should have a lot of build. For me, if you take MJF out of this equation... And MJF's promos that he's done over the last few weeks, there's nothing there. Yeah, for me anyway. I, I like them all as individuals. They've all got great. They're great talented guys. MJF's carried this one for me. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I can't argue with that one. Um, yeah, you know, I have been critical of the build for weeks, and mm. as much as I've looked forward to the match, and I've really wanted to give them every opportunity, and every time. One of the others grabs the microphone. I'm kind of willing them to, you know, do well and, and smash yeah. it out of the park. But, I mean, even Jungle Boy's um, comments about travelling up and down that same road, it was just boring. It was just yeah. boring. And and one of the best things about this this week was MJF's comments about Jungle Boy he, trapping himself in an echo chamber and boring himself to death. Like, that was, <laughs> that was really yeah. funny. Yeah. So yeah, I, I know though, without a shadow of a doubt, this fight for four way match on Sunday is going to be excellent. So oh, in ring ability wise, there's yeah, no, there is that, not even a uh, you know a hoot about. I wouldn't sit there and go none of them. Uh, it wouldn't be able to do it in the ring. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think MJF has literally carried this whole yeah build for me. Uh, but yeah. you're right, the match itself. We'll but now I, I want to see Max in a proper feud now, a, a proper rivalry, yeah. a one-on-one -on -one that builds perhaps to the next pay-per-view or even one of the special Dynamite, even all in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to see that now. I don't want him to be in limbo. I'd like no. to, him to wrestle a bit more. And I know what he says about him being an attraction and he doesn't have to wrestle. Yeah. Um, you know, even looking at WWE and the criticism Roman Reigns gets for being a part-time champion, he wrestles a lot more than MJF has in the past few years. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think we need to see more matches from him as well, which yeah. you know seems obvious. Really, I just, what do you think about that? I know, I know what he says about I'm an attraction and you pay to see me, but I just don't think we see enough of him in the ring. My my, my view is your champion should not necessarily always be in the ring. Um, yeah, but should do a hell of a lot more than what he has done. L yeah. Listen, he's on the mic. Yeah, he's had, there's no one in that company that can well. Yet, we'll get on to that in a minute. That can touch him, yeah, on the microphone. Nobody, um, I would have liked to have seen more of the champion. Um, whether this is a contractual issue, whether this is just a we're just going to build him slowly, I don't know. But 
Because it seems to me that it, I, I think that he's dropping this not in this pay per view, not in not in a million Sundays does he lose uh, on Sunday. I think he might drop it at all in. Yeah, um, I don't know who to. I mean, this is just. Uh, I, I'm just not been that impressed of his title reign because he hasn't defended it enough and there's not been enough in-ring action from me to not saying believe in it because you know yeah, he's no. got it, but it's just he hasn't done enough as a character wise for me. And again, maybe this is storyline or contractual stuff, but yeah, you're right. It just for me, he just hasn't done enough. <clears throat> the thing is, he's been there most weeks, hasn't yeah. he? And he's just been here and he's just he's just said a few lines or he's yeah. I think last week they just showed him backstage, but yeah, he threw the I mean, he snapped the uh, drink out of uh uh, microphone out of uh, Renee, didn't he? Yeah, I mean he's in great condition. He's young. Um, you would you would think all wrestlers want to be at the top of the the PWI top hundred. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's had enough matches to even be considered, like in the top five. No, yeah, really. I think that would be an injustice to the guys like Moxley and and you know the ones that are doing it week in week out more often than yeah. not. So I don't know what their criteria is. Um. But it's strange that he's a champion. He's been champion a long time. Yeah. Uh, and that he might not even be in the top five in PWI. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's only because it's not really a criticism of AEW as such. We just want to see more. He's a great wrestler. We want to see more of him. We do. Uh, and it's not as if he's had this 15 year career and he's winding down. He should be, right. you know, good to go fresh. most weeks. Yeah. yeah. He should be fresh in his prime to a degree. Yeah. Um, but we will see. We, we will see what happens. The next match, uh, forgive me, it was uh, Tarek, ta- ta- get a name up, Taya Valkyrie and Lady Frost. When I first heard about this match was happening, I was like, oh, I like, I know of Lady Frost, I've seen her, and Taya's great. It didn't work. No. And I don't know what it was, it just an off day. It just did not work for me at all. Um uh, it was good. Obviously, Taya gets the win because she's got Jade Cargill coming up at the uh, uh, double or nothing. It just didn't work. Like I've said it so many times, yeah. it just didn't work. <clears throat> yeah. See, I haven't been very impressed with Taya's run at all mm. in, in AEW. Uh, and that's not necessarily her fault. Um, no. I think when you've got people like Willow Nightingale there uh, and some yeah. of the other female stars... Oh, there's so much more interesting things they could be doing. And nobody expect for a second, I don't think, for, for Ty Valkyrie to beat Jade at the pay-per-view. I don't think she's... I think when that happens, whoever beats her, it, it, there's got to be more of a... I know they've done the thing where she couldn't hit the finisher last time, could she? Yeah. And then she just got a really bad roll-up uh, defeat. Yeah. I just don't think... Again, we're talking about build to a match. Yeah. Even to a title change, there needs to be a bit of a... Yeah, and especially one with Jade, who you know, listen, she's still green. There's no doubt about that. She's still learning her trade in in AEW, but they, she's money. I mean, look at her, <laughs> Jesus, yeah. she's money, right? So you put your title on her, and you improve by giving her matches, matches, matches. And a veteran like Taya should bring the best out of uh, Jade. But again, not in a million Sundays are you expecting that title to go a double or nothing. <clears throat> no, no. no and- no, again, it's it's a miss. I'm afraid that this yeah. this whole few and I'd really like Chris Statlander to show up soon. Okay. Um, I think Chris Statlander and Jade could put on a good match yeah. uh, and a good feud. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I think AEW at times they have these start. They're ready made. They're there. The the va- the fans love them. They're invested in them. I mean Willow, she connects with the audience. Yeah. Um, and they try and. Uh, they go to more effort uh, of going with a less obvious candidate, and you just like yeah. just do what is screaming out at you, you know. So, yeah, Willow. Obviously, congratulations to Willow as well, beating Mercedes. Uh, sorry, I call her Sasha Banks still. Um, yeah. the, uh, the title I think they were created for Sasha that she can't win because I think she broke her ankle. Uh, yes, during that. Yeah. So, obviously, well wishes against Christ. I, I have my personal uh, things about. I don't particularly like. When she doesn't get her way, she cries and walks out. But look, we don't wish injury on anybody. Uh, and that is just my opinion. It's not necessarily shared by Dave or anybody else on, on the show. That's just my opinion. Anyway, we move on to Tony Khan and his major announcement, a weekly major announcement. We were waiting to find out. This was the key bit. Now, it was where was this 
collision, uh, first taping of collision going to be? Was it going to be in Chicago or was it going to be in Jacksonville? And it is in Chicago, which we now all know what that means. Apparently, and this is Meltzer talking, there was NDA signed so that he makes the dates that he's going to be doing. So basically, Dave, what we're going to be hearing at Collision is living colour, cult of personality, punk is back. Can we now, do you think, put this all to bed and just get on with enjoying CM Punk on AEW television again? <clears throat> I hope so. I hope so. It's never usually um, that easy, is it? No. So and I think everybody will be... He's going to get a massive reaction in Chicago. Oh. Mm. Um, regardless what happens. So the test really will be what happens following that and what they set up at the first. I anticipate collision will come on and there'll be a bit of a silence and then the theme, it's because they're calling it the second coming, aren't they? They was, yeah. And that's exactly what happened on the first dance. Yeah. Just where the red lights were flashing and everyone was chanting his name. Do you, do you think also it'll be good to get it out the way? A bit like yeah. the first dance bit, the first thing they've done, because you know if he's not there, they're going to chant it all night. Yeah, they'll be they'll be chanting it all night. It will derail the show. It will derail any of the matches. You know, yeah. anybody else that comes out to do a, a promo, they're just going to be drowned out by CM Punk yeah. chants. And so yeah, get that... it out of the way. Get a feud started with him. It doesn't yeah. have to have a physical thing. It can just be someone comes out, boom, and that's. Yeah. Let's hope now that this. Well, the first biggest test will be when the champions are on both shows, and if they and one of them end up being the elite, or they were saying that to promote stuff or when stuff gets close to a pay-per-view, they're going to be putting together. Yeah. Um, now, the, the biggest test will obviously be when some of these guys are going to go from one, potentially the elite hangman, move from show to show. Uh, even yeah. Moxley. Moxley was pissed with him as well. Um, yeah, let's just hope that. Let's Can we just enjoy Punk being back? Regardless of what you think of CM Punk, whatever, I, I think yeah. he's still great. I don't necessarily agree with everything that he's done, but yeah. He's a draw, and this is what AEW needs right now. With the, I mean, the ratings were good this week compared to other weeks, but they need the draw. They need Punk, regardless of what anybody will tell you. They need him. He's got a lot to offer as well. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of dream matches still uh, yeah. there. I mean, if he comes out at Collision and he's interrupted by Samoa Joe, and that leads to a match the following week, <laughs> I'm I'm all about that. I would yeah. absolutely love that. There's a lot of matches I want to see. Mm. I, I think Punk or obviously he'll allude to certain things when he's talking, um, but I just hope he doesn't take it too far. Joe comes out or someone similar to that, that he could just build towards a match and we can just enjoy wrestling. And, you know, in time, what happened with Kenny in the books and hopefully they'll be able to work with each other at some point. But yeah, yeah as you say, let's just, let's just get AEW back on track and, and let's start enjoying it again. Exactly. Uh, straight after that, Hangman Adam Page had a bit of an interview about the, uh, the Blackpool Combat Club. Then the contract signing, Jericho and Adam Cole Bay Bay. Um, there was a lot of to and froing on this. There was a real lot of personal stuff that was being thrown out, obviously about Brit, everything else. Really got it going. There was a no um, uh, phys the violence thing between those two. Um, if they wanted the match, they couldn't hit each other. There was obviously Jericho goading him um, to hit him. And then they were talking about, oh, there's five of us and two of you. And I'm thinking, well, hang on a minute. Is is, is Carl O'Reilly going to come back here? Are we going to see an Undisputed Era thing or what? Yeah. He gets on the mic and he says that this is someone that I've idolized growing up and he lives out in Las Vegas. And he's crazier than you guys at the Jericho Bridge side. And then Chris Jericho says, well, who's crazier than us? And he went homicidal, suicidal, genocidal, sabu. And I've got to admit, even I was like, what the fuck's this? Like, yeah. seriously? I didn't even know he, I, I mean, whether or not that was written for him to say, I, I don't know. I, I never, I've never seen Adam Cole interview where he said he's idolized Sabu. Yeah. Um, Sabu comes out, um, throws a chair at one of them. I think it was Matt Menard. And, and I believe now that he's the special enforcer for this, the unsanctioned match between Adam Cole and Jericho. Where on earth did this come from? I've got no idea. And, and, oh. I've been trying to process this since I've watched the show, really, uh, and what I think about it, mm. um, because it definitely got a reaction and it popped the crowd. Yeah. Um, it makes no sense. No. It makes no sense. And it doesn't really make any... I know that 
Jericho was in ECW at a time. Briefly, yeah. Yeah, and yes, all the, it's it's a hardcore star match or it's an unsanctioned match and it's in Las Vegas. Uh, there's problematic things, uh, which I don't know if you want to kind of talk about the politics and some of the racist things that Sabu this, said in the past. I think, or... Yeah, I, I think going on to that, I think a lot of the, the, the IWC, as they're called, were like, well, you banned Hogan for saying this stuff. Yeah. Yet you're employing, so it might just be, well, listen, it's probably going to be a one-off. It might be more going forward. We don't know. Um, but you're employing Sabu to come in and do something. Um, yeah, as you say, politics is politics. There's no room for racism anywhere in anywhere in no. any form of life. We don't agree with it, anything like that. Um, well, with what happened with Kendrick, see that 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 bugs me more than Hogan, to be mm. honest with you. The mm. way that you know these historical tweets were yep. dragged up about Brian Kendrick, he was meant to be coming in, yeah, and he was it Moxley he was meant to face or Danielson. Moxley, um, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's Moxley. Mm-hmm. And then these historic tweets came up, and that was it. They that didn't happen, and he was gone before it even started. Yeah. And then they can bring Sabu in. It, it, Sabu, Sabu, Sabu. Sabu. <laughs> yeah. Hey, why, um, why not? <laughs> they, can, they can bring him in, and apparently the comments he made, he didn't even apologize for. Um, I don't know, mate. The, the way that I'm trying to just certain. Certain things happen on certain AW shows, and it's not for me. Yeah. Um, but they do throw a lot out there and a lot of different things, different style of matches, different characters. Mm-hmm. I'm, tra- I'm trying to just accept that, that it's not something I'm particularly bothered about yeah. um, and not something that I was like, oh, great. <laughs> but at the same time, it doesn't majorly upset me. I don't no. think it will be a, it'll be coming in long term. No. M- maybe there was plans with O'Reilly and Ro- O'Reilly's... Um, still injured um and they've had to just bring somebody in who was in the air i don't know surely there was more options but you don't think it's a i don't mean this in the in, i mean this in the, in the most respectful term possible you don't think it was a little bit of a panic thing ticket sales we're in the shit here i know he could have brought bigger name in but it's like yeah. someone that's in the area that's not what known worldwide because obviously of everything he's done is it could it just been something as, as simple as that I don't know. it's just it just came from nowhere. No, it's, quite, it's, it's quite funny, really, that we were yeah. talking to Just Incredible last week. And we said, as, uh, you know, as, as Tony Khan reached out to you, any of you old ECW guys, and Just Incredible. No, no, not as far as I'm aware. And yeah. then we get to Dynamite and, and Sabu makes his debut. Um, I don't know. I don't hate it. Uh, I just don't get it. I just didn't understand. I mean, I was just like, what? What like that was that was my view, and I was just like, well, I'm trying to search through, and I can I can't see any interview with Adam Cole that uh, that said that, but he may he may have done. Look, we don't know these things. Um, anyway, let, let's move on. One of my favorite matches come right up next was Roddy Strong and Garcia. Yeah. For Christ's sake, give them half an hour and let them bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and this is conflicting. We've we've spoke about it a few times about the long matches or short matches and yeah. keeping stuff for pay per view and not. Mm-hmm. This for me was a perfect example of what AEW does well. Yeah, uh, Roderick Strong. I, see, I I knew about Roderick Strong and I've seen him in a, NXT over the years and Ring of mm-hmm. Honor and, and and you know bits and pieces on the indies. Yeah, um, I didn't realize how good he was until this this run he started in AEW. No. Everything think... he does is just so good. Every move yeah. he, he dishes out, everything he takes, you combine that with Daniel Garcia, and it was one hell of a match. Money is, I mean, that he's just so smooth, yeah, and strong. Um, I think that obviously, you know, when he's undisputed here, he's probably got lost in that limelight. About I'm not saying that he's not as good as Adam Cole, but obviously, Adam Cole was the forefront of the undisputed era. You were yeah. always going to be, you know, you know. but AEW, even in two weeks, uh, let him have two different matches because the Jericho one was a oh, was good. anywhere, yeah. Jericho one was an anywhere one, Garcia one was just a, a straight one on one. Um, he's just knocked it out of the park. Is this also, do you think, Roddy Strong with a point to prove after WWE just leaving him in the dust for the last 18 months? Possibly, because as I said to you, I, I, it just makes no sense to me that you can't find somewhere for him on, even if uh, if not on the main roster, you'd want to keep him in NXT and, and want him working with younger guys coming through. Um, yeah. That's what they had. He was, he was in Diamond Mine on NXT, which was two, yeah. a couple of brothers. And 
then next thing you know, he's he's gone. Like that was it. Never saw him again. <laughs> Yeah, and you don't know what's happened. You know, there could be stuff that we're not aware of. And his yeah. wife is obviously in AEW with him now. And he, he could he'd probably be a lot happier with that situation as well. Yeah. He spends more time with his wife now. Well, he did ask uh, for these release for four four consecutive times. And four consecutive times, he was told no. That That's yeah. according to, you know, internet. That's not me saying I know this for a fact. That's what the report yeah. was saying. So, and if, if that is true as well, I mean... I think anybody would have a little bit of an attitude or an issue with that. If if you're being denied your release and you're not being used, yeah, um, that's got to be frustrating as hell. So I'm I'm kind of really happy for him. You know, I obviously yeah. don't know him at all, but um, just to be given this opportunity and to do so well with it, and and now to be like it'll be a safe, a safe pair of hands to mm-hmm. put into matches with the likes of Punk. Yeah. Or anybody really, he he could have a good match yeah. with anyone. I'm convinced of that now. Me too. I, I, yeah, listen, it's good to see him doing it what he does best because, as you say, he was in the doldrums for so long, and it it it, it looks like he's enjoying it. Put it out. Yeah, way. yeah, That's you good. can tell. Um, main event time, uh, Dynamite this week. I'm going to add a little bit on to something because I have watched Rampage. And I'm going to spoil a little bit for you, but I, I need to address something that happened that could affect double or nothing. So I want to okay. do. That. Main event was Lucha Brothers, Claudio and Yuga. Um, again, can you just let these guys go for 40 minutes? Can you put that match on a ring of honor pay-per-view, wherever yeah. the next one is, wherever it's ladder match, wherever it's just a 40 minute spe- j- j- give them the whole fucking show and just yeah. let them let them go. Because again, it was a great the, the show as a whole, the in-ring bits, bar in the women's match, brilliant. Yeah. The rest of it was just a little bit down here for me. But when you had those big matches on, Cassidy, Strong, uh, BCC and, and uh, Lucha Brothers, brilliant. If it, if it wasn't the go-home show for a, a pay-per-view, yeah. I'd be more than happy with, with this yeah. this week. It was going to say some good matches. Mm-hmm. Um, or, it didn't feel like a go-home show. No, there were some elements of it. Uh, and as you say, they've struggled with the build for a couple of the matches. Particularly Where was the, the elite one. this week? Well, the, Kenny wasn't there, was he? The young mm. book showed up at the end. Um, mm. Hangman, they showed him backstage. Yeah, but then backstage. Yeah. he didn't come out and it kind of made the books look a little bit cowardly. Yeah. Uh, running off in the crowd while the heels were in the ring, kind of saying, you know, that they're there to fight. And so, uh, uh, yeah. A, a great dynamite, a great main event. Um, I could watch the Lucha Brothers every single week quite happily, as singles or, or, or on their own. Um, yeah. And, and Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Ute, again, like Roderick Strong, they don't have bad matches. No, they don't indeed. I mean, obviously, at the end of the match, Lucha, the Lucha Brothers retained, uh, which, again, probably... I didn't think because of where the BCC are going on Sunday with the anarchy in the arena, I, I didn't foresee a change. No, it would have been a surprise. Um, and again, maybe that's going to be a prologue to giving them a lot longer on a, a ring of honor pay per view or a ring of honor show, uh, where those titles should be defended. Um, yeah. Moxley got the mic on the end and said, If you, if you think you could squeamish, you haven't seen nothing yet. I'm god knows what's going to yeah. happen in this on uh, on Sunday, but there was something that's going to happen on Dynamite. Uh, sorry, that happens on Rampage. I'm sorry to spoil it, but I, I think it's necessary that we bring this up. So the Outcast attacked Jamie Hayter on Rampage this week. Uh, Jamie Hayter still isn't cleared. Okay. That was Tony Carter. I think he had a, a presser yesterday, uh, and he said that she's still not clear to compete. Yeah. Are we going to be looking at Sunday? Is she going to come out and do a job because she's her, and it's instead of because we've had this interim stuff, and we, you've watched all access, you know that what the interim sort of thing that, that how it affected the locker room, how it you know how it caused a lot of problems. Are they going to try and get Hater to perhaps do the match do, so it's like a clean or not even doesn't have to be a clean ending, but if she is this injury and she can't compete. Is it best just to save her title? Or maybe she wins it back at all in. <clears throat> yeah, so there was a similar situation with Christian, wasn't there, and Jungle Boy when they kind yeah. of they couldn't do the match, so they had to. Yeah. Um, they did like an attack on the ramp. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe they'll go with something like that. But you wouldn't want to kind of jeopardize if she's not clear. She's not clear, mm-hmm. and and yeah. she shouldn't be put in any situation where it might make things worse. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think they'd be reluctant to go, to do anything in regards to an interim yeah. champion. Um, they just cancel the match then, or what, what? What? What would you do in this situation? Well, I don't think I, I think Tony Storm will still have a match. Um, yeah, difficult one. Maybe maybe um, maybe Hater has to kind of say I've got to relinquish my title because it's not fair in the women division, and the match between Tony Storm and maybe Ruby Soho. I'm not they're in a faction, yeah, aren't they? Or Willow not um, maybe Will, Willow. Yeah, who are they? Who were they feuding with? Uh, the, 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 the outcast. So uh, it was Saray. It's the outcast. Uh, Britt Baker. Britt. Um, maybe could could Britt Cheetah, step in? Cheetah. 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 Yeah, they've they've got options. Um, maybe they did a multi-person four-way match or something to determine yeah. a new champion. I mean, look, hopefully <laughs> she gets cleared. Maybe it, it, yeah. it may even be that she is, and it's just a you know a storyline thing but for him to come out and say it I mean, I've just watched a little bit of the night of the night of champions I know we should be talking about WWE on an AEW uh, show but um, they've said that Cody suffered a broken arm and he's still going to fight Brock Lesnar yeah now, whether or not that's a, 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 a true I mean he did injure his arm on Raw that was part of the, the attack but yeah, may, maybe they're just going down the route of she's hurt uh, you know she's not it, well, she's, maybe she is clear but they're saying that she's not just a but hopefully, and obviously, hopefully, she's fine, and we don't we don't hope she misses. She's missed quite a number of weeks now. So you were saying it was this, the stairs. She got pushed into the stairs, right? Yeah. And then yeah. she kind of run up the ramp of some fort and with her yeah. shoulder. Um. So look, we, we obviously wish her well, even if you know, even if this is just a, even if this is I'll give me words. It is just a storyline uh, injury. Um, we do wish her well. Hopefully, she can compete a uh, uh, double nothing. I'm sorry to spoil Rampage. I know that you haven't. Uh, watched it but I just felt that was a noteworthy piece definitely once, once I read the Tony Khan thing after that I just felt it was like a noteworthy thing to say because obviously we've had especially with this particular title we've had a lot of these interims a lot of these you know things like it may be better that she just relinquishes it instead of having to do this interim stuff and if you say you don't want to risk we don't know the nature of the injury whether or not a match would it's a bit like again I keep talking WWE and I apologise when Cody Rhodes had a match with Seth Rollins in Hell in a Cell he had tore his peck off the bone so it wasn't going to do any more damage basically couldn't do any yeah. more couldn't, you could injure something else but you couldn't re-injure what yeah. you injured so it made sense to compete I don't think Tony Storm is in that situation by the sounds of it so, what are, we, what are we now? Friday, two days. Well, what they could do, uh, and I don't know whether this is, is storyline and this is what they're shooting for, but obviously Thunder Rosa reappeared a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> they could do something very, very interesting with Thunder Rosa and the interim situation and some kind of um, some kind of interaction between Brit and Thunder Rosa. Mm -hmm. There's potential there to, to tell a hell of a story. Um, there is. based on what actually happened in real life so yeah hopefully they'll be able to to turn it into a positive mm. and if we can have Jamie Hayter back for all in um you know then then great yeah exactly that I think that's the way to do it let's let's just wrap this one up Dave let's just do a couple of little bits uh, of what we've got coming up um in about 50 minutes time uh, I'm with the NWA boys again we've got the fridge that is uh Jack's Dane on myself and Fiona will be conducting that um, we're back Sunday, Dave, with um, a double or nothing preview prediction show with your yep. good buddies at Honor the Elite. I know they're looking forward to it. They've been posting out on Facebook. And very thank you very much for that, guys. We really do appreciate you uh, 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 posting us on on there. Um, it should be it'd be a good show for us. It'd be the first time I've really met anyone from Honor of the Elite. Um, I know they're big AEW fans. So they're going to have to excuse my. Uh, not saying impartial because I am a WD fan, but I'm a wrestling fan more importantly. So yeah. I don't side with one or the other. I just give my opinions. Um, yeah, it should I, be a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be. I'm looking forward to it. I've also got to do a Night of Champions review, review with Andy at some point. That pay per view is tomorrow. And again, apologies of talking WWE on an AEW review. No, I'll be watching it, man. I'll yeah, be watching that's it. at six. And it's at six o'clock. I'm literally going to my local chippy, getting my dinner, putting it on the big screen. Happy day, six o'clock pay per view brilliant uh, monday if it's a bank holiday monday so we need to check we need to work out on times on this day we need to review double or nothing yeah uh, and i'm sure it will be it will work out from whatever you know i'm sure it, I, I don't doubt the action will be good put it that yeah. way 
Um, when do you think Punk's were... involved? Just quickly, do you think Punk's involved at, at, at Double or Nothing, or would they, they just going to hold no. off? I think I think to sell tickets for Collision at the minute, they're going to have to just hold him off. Mm. I don't think it makes any sense him coming now. Then what's it about three weeks, four weeks? Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's just better because again, he's going to be under the same roof as. I don't know if we're quite. I don't think we'd be quite ready for that yet. To be honest, I don't think we're quite ready for it, let alone uh, anybody. Yeah. Else. Um. Just to touch on it, so Wednesday, uh, myself and Andy are interviewing. <laughs> funnily enough, the guy that pissed off CM Punk at the uh, All In uh, was it All In Preza? Pre- press uh, All Out. All All Out. Fucking In Out. Shake it all about Jesus. Uh, press conference. Um. Nick Hausman. Thursday, me and you are uh, uh, interviewing uh, Yestin Reese, who's just won. He's just come back from injury and he's just won the title and it's the first ever title that this company's ever put on. Uh, they've asked for the link for the uh, audio as well, uh, for the video when it when it's done. So that'll be good to uh, do that. I'm just going to do a couple of more before we uh, head off. Uh, next Tuesday, the 6th of June, I haven't put, I have put you on it. Uh, Matt Cardona's death match queen, Steph Delanda, will be coming on. I have sent Steph the format. I need to send them to you and Andy. I apologise. I... Uh, Thought I'd send it to her for approval. She hasn't approved or disapproved it yet. I, to be honest, it was pretty decent, so I don't think she will. Um, next Wednesday, the seventh. Yes, I've put you on this as well. Uh, we're meeting uh, Ignite uh, Wrestling Breakout uh, Harrison Leon. He he's not going to be on Buckle Up, um, but he he was one of the he was in the new division that started at the bitter end. He'll be on Ignite later on. I think it's good just to get him on. He was one of the guys that I said uh, if he was signed by somebody. Big, I wouldn't have been surprised. Um, yeah. And lastly, because it goes into my birthday week, I don't want to you know, send cards if you want. Um, I'll put all that up. <laughs> the last one I'm going to do for that week is the 15th, and I'm going to get you on this as well. If you want, Dave, we're going to be chatting to Angelina Love. So if you want to come and chat to Angelina Love, that is on the Thursday. That would be great, yeah. Big Thursday. TNA star and Impact. TNA Speaking star. of Impact, yes, um, I noticed Flash uh, Webster um, yes. popped up in Impact, and that was okay. great to see. After all we... that, guys, if you can see this uh, somewhere in, inside the ropes, page one, it's probably can't see it because I'm holding that wrong. That it's us. It's buckle up. Um, please do it. Dave's going to do it now. Look, he's going to do it a lot better than me. There you go. Look at that. Someone that can do it better than me. There we are. There we are with Ignite for Buckle Up in Inside the Ropes. There's a QR code there. Scan it, buy a ticket. Very limited now. Very limited tickets now. So please do get a ticket. But as you say, and also Angelina Love, just quickly, NWA. Yeah. Another end. She's now with the NWA as well. So, Dave, it has been great as always talking some AEW with you. Um, We are back on Sunday uh, for the uh, Double or Nothing preview. Guys, uh, so thank you, Dave, again today. Hopefully you'll just start finishing getting a weather that man flu. We know this is a career career, uh, threatening uh, uh, injury that you have, which is uh, probably worse than your slip discs in your back. Yeah, probably, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) Guys, this has been the AEW Review on the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Oh, last thing, quickly, thank you to uh, all of the uh, internet uh, dirt sheets in America that put our podcast on about just incredible on wednesday uh we very much appreciate that uh you don't i don't know why you guys listen to us but hey ho thank you for doing so and it's very much appreciated that you go out there and put our stories on on your pages we appreciate that very 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 much even we don't fish for that sort of stuff we're not about that but hey look just keep watching if you want to snip something go for it We're, we're happy as long as you credit us and do what you normally do so thank you guys this has been the awe on the hitting the turnbuckle podcast he has been Dynamite Man Dave DMD. I have been your host, Adam Cousins, and I will see you guys in about 50 minutes' time. Good night. 